My name is Daniel Rogers with Duo Tech Services, and what I'm here to talk to you about today is noise figure. Now, previously we've talked about some other concepts having to do with signals or RF and, uh, and other concepts, but what is noise figure? Um, where does it come into play? Why do you care? How do you practically deal with it? And what does it do inside of systems? Well, we talked about phase noise at one point, and that's really a, a time domain concept. Uh, in digital domains, you'll hear about things like jitter, uh, phase noise being, you know, how close is something to the actual carrier? What's the actual distribution having to do with that? But, but noise figure is something that's latent and innate in all systems where you're dealing with signals, uh, whether you're dealing with uh, op amps or RF amplifiers. Now, we're going to talk about in the sense of uh, having a signal to noise ratio. You know, what comes into a system versus what comes out, coming back to you, and and what is the noise content of that? Why do you care? Where does it come up? Well, if you're looking at linear noise, you know, SNR in, SNR out, as ratios, and then looking at noise figure in terms of uh, dB, you can get a noise figure measurement. Now, what is it? Where does it come from? What am I talking about when it comes to noise figure? Well, noise figure comes from noise within a system. Now, if we're talking about amplifiers, and we are in this case, we're talking about a an amount of random noise, Brownian noise, something that's truly random, not you know something that only operates in a window or something that has any predictability, something that is truly random and has to be mitigated by virtue of the devices that you're using in order to have a better signal to noise ratio. It really comes into play with radar quite often. And if you're talking about noise, you're talking about something that's, in this case, that's thermally related. And by talking about a noise figure, I'm talking about something that is being keyed around being measured at 290 degrees Kelvin. And the actual temperature of the device comes into play. It's not hugely effective, especially in smaller temperature delta ranges, but the actual noise temperature of the system does matter when it comes to talking about noise figure. Now, where does this come in? If I'm talking about sending out a main bang, a radar pulse, something goes out, comes back, you have an inverse cube of loss based upon going out spatially, having that wave come out, having that wave come back, and then you've got a really, really small signal. So if I'm talking about sending out a, a 10 k watt pulse, I've got 70 dB, I'm very loud, and then I look to receive that, and I have something that's under 100 dB down, 100, 110 dB down. Uh, so you, let's say you have a delta there, of 180 dB. That's a huge, massive, uh, multi-order of magnitude range of shift in magnitude. And all of a sudden, I'm I'm, I'm measuring a very small signal. And if I have a radar system where my minimum detectable signal is down at, say, minus 120 dBm, and I come in at something like, say, minus 111, then I have an, an amount of signal that I have before I hit the actual noise floor of the system. But on the front end of that, I'm going to try to amplify that signal up to bring it up into a usable range. So what comes into play? What if I have a, a, a I, I need to bring that range up to, say, minus 10 dBm in order to go into the system, in order to be mixed down, and then go to the data converters? Well, there are characteristics of amplifiers that matter, that actually have an innate latent thermal noise that have a noise figure that needs to be dealt with. You often hear about low noise amplifiers. Now, where do low noise amplifiers come in? They have a gain that is extremely advantageous for the amount of noise that they introduce into the system. So if I'm looking to in, to mitigate that, what I'm, I'm looking to do is I'm, I'm primarily looking at my first amplifying stage. If you're cascading amplifiers in order to bring that signal up and up and up, you're primarily being driven by the first stage amplifier that comes into your system. One good practice is when you have a system that there's spectral noise out there is to filter the amplify. You have less garbage out in the environment that you're bringing up. Not really a noise figure, that's just a, a good best practice. Now, when we're talking about amplifiers, I've got a little RF amplifier here that operates in the X band. I have this and it's got about a 5 dB noise figure. Depending on your application, that could be high, that could be low, that could be middle of the road. If I'm looking at a low noise amplifier for the purpose of radar, I like 1 dB. I'd like as little noise as I could possibly get. But that first stage, that small signal, if you have a very small signal to noise ratio, and you bring that up, well, what's happening? Well, if I have a signal at a given level that comes in, and let's say that I have a, a scale where I have an amount of power that comes in, that's 
that that's something say if, if I want to come in and say that's um, going to be at zero dBm and I have an amplifier that gives me 20 dB of gain, then I'm going to take that signal level and I'm going to bring it up here to say plus 20 dBm. Now that's bringing your signal level up. That's getting that's making it louder. That's making it more useful in some cases you could say. But what if I look at this and I have a noise floor that's down here. If I have an amplifier that has a high innate noise and I bring that noise floor closer and closer, when I actually bring this up, I'm going to be shifting the noise floor up with the rest of the system. That's why noise figure matters. And suppose you have an amplifier, you're trying to keep that noise level down, you find a good low noise amplifier, but you also have an attenuation system built into the actual uh, subsystem, whether it be radar, communications, whatever. One thing to keep in mind is if you put an attenuator in the system, and you've seen them in probably in other cases, step attenuators, fixed attenuators, um, variable attenuators, those items, for every dB of attenuation, you effectively have one dB of noise figure that you're introducing to the system. So if I have a very high noise amplifier, and the innate noise is 8 dB, noise figure, 10 dB noise figure, but I also have an attenuator in the wrong place in the system where I'm attenuating 30 dB, well, my noise figure just went way up by virtue of having an attenuator in the wrong order in the system. And you can find a commentary on this from folks like Keysight uh, and various other RF techs talking about the cascade effects of noise figure and how it's propagated system because order does matter in the selection, the grade of amplifier that you put in your system. Well, how do you measure it? If I have something that's random, and I put a signal in, and I notice something about the spectral purity of that signal, that's great. Go back to phase noise. <laughs> we talked about spectral purity in that sense. But what about the noise floor? How do I know what the noise figure of my amplifier is? Well, the only real way to know that is to have a known level of excess noise. Now, if you look at E and R, the excess noise ratio, the, um, this is a value uh, that comes up in, in very special noisy diodes that are built that have a D, have, that have a, a dB E and R value of an amount of noise that goes into the amplifier. So you can put in nothing, put in something at one value E and R and another value of E and R, and there is, a, I believe, the HP or Keysight. You can find all sorts of commentary about how do you actually perform this methodology, but what you have to have is you have to have some sort of truly random Brownian noise in order to perform a measurement that allows you to measure noise figure. So when you're looking into the broad scope and scale of how you build a system with the best noise performance and you're looking to select amplifiers and you're looking at noise figure, remember, you want the lowest noise amplifier to come first, otherwise the noise figure itself will eat you up in the end. It's, 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 a, it's an item that may be somewhat counterintuitive, but when you look at the actual expression of how the noise figure cascades through the system, you start as clean as you possibly can with the lowest noise, and if you have to have higher noise amplifiers farther down the chain, select them farther down the chain in order to get the best bang for your buck in the noise of the system. This comes into play when dealing with uh, radar and communication systems and when you are trying to perform a selection this comes with a cost this comes with a cost and the actual uh, value of you know what are your individual parts how do you build the rest of the system but if you make wise selections early about where you need to be especially when it comes to noise figure and you're looking at say a radar system what are the cheapest places to get range and signal quality back it's the size of the aperture that you can get for receive and transmit gain and the noise figure of what you can get coming back in the system. And if you look at power, especially when you're talking about linear devices, linear cascading of devices, like for solid state amplifiers, you're gonna have a linear gro growth in price. But if you can work out making the cleanest possible product at the front end, you'll have the best bang for your buck in the end. I'm Daniel Rogers with the Duotech Services. Come check us out on our website, duotechservices.com. Follow us on Twitter or Facebook. And if you have an application where you're looking for RF subsystem communication systems, radar system work, please start a conversation. We'd love to talk to you.